I'm a professor of theoretical physics in the UK, but I was born in Baghdad. I have an English mother, an Iraqi father, and so on my father's side I have this heritage of these great scholars from a golden age that I feel passionate about sharing with the world. I wrote a book a few years ago called Pathfinders. It was translated into many languages. In America, it came out under the title The House of Wisdom, Beit al Hekma, the great, almost mythical center of learning in Baghdad during the Abbasid period. Now, thankfully, of the books that I've written, it's the only one that's been translated into Arabic. Al Asr al Dhahabi al Ulum al Arabiyya, al Ruwad. Um, in that book, I describe many of the great achievements of this golden age of science. Age as the golden age of Arabic science. Now, not all the scholars were Arabs, many were Persian. Not all the scholars were Muslims, many were Christians and Jews. This was a period when scholarship was encouraged for the sake of scholarship and learning. And it shows that scientific achievement doesn't depend on which part of the world you're in, what civilization you're part of, what language, what culture, what religion you follow. Science is about asking questions about the world around us. And I think it's important to remind the Arab world and the, and the wider Muslim world that science wasn't a construct of the West, even though that is the narrative that we are even taught in schools in the Arab world today. That science really goes back as a continuum, all the way from the ancient Greeks, through this golden age of Arabic science, through to the Renaissance and the scientific revolution. Greatest scholars might want to go to Harvard or MIT in America. There, if you had an idea, if you're a philosopher, a scientist, a theologian, a mathematician, a musician, any sort of scholar, Baghdad was the place to go. And all creeds or cultures or religions were tolerated because it was, there was this spirit of free and rational inquiry.